Hey everybody, Henry W. Steele here, and I want to talk to you quickly about the phenomenon known as Out of Bounds, which is an astronomical or astrological thing that happens when a planet's declination is more than the maximum declination possible of the Sun, or for that matter, less than. Now here, let me give you some examples of it really quickly. Um, let me go ahead and restrict everything except for the Sun, for starters. Now, <clears throat> this is um, the longitude of the sun in the zodiac right here. It's at currently right now at 98 degrees of the zodiac. And this is the latitude of the sun. That's the number of degrees above or below the plane from the earth to the sun. And you see the sun's always going to be at zero because the plane, the standard, is being set by the plane from the earth to the sun, like I said. So all other planets are going to be judged by that plane. So they're going to go a few degrees above or a few degrees below that particular plane. Now, the number of degrees that a planet, and we'll use the moon as an example. We'll take the moon right here. The number of degrees above zero in latitude that a planet and we'll say the moon because that's what we're using right here can go and we see that it can it goes about 5.2 5.3 degrees above uh, zero latitude and then as we go further it gets lower hits zero and then goes negative about 5.2 degrees below zero latitude that number of degrees in latitude that this particular planet, the moon in this case, can go above or below zero here is the number of degrees that it will be able to go out of bounds from the maximum declination because this right here is not calculated the same way as declination. Declination, if we go to settings and go to calculations, go to equatorial positions, the declination of planets are derived from measuring from the equator of the Earth, thus the name equatorial. But anyway, so what we have here, if you notice all of a sudden, the Sun and the Moon have much larger numbers here. The Sun can have declination because it's being measured from the equator of the Earth now. And we see that the maximum declination that the Sun can have happens right here at the summer solstice point which is the cusp of um, Cancer right here, the line between the third and fourth sign of the zodiac, Gemini and Cancer, or where the sun's at 90 degrees in the zodiac. That's maximum um, declination of 23.4 degrees. So the moon's maximum possible declination is gonna be the sun's maximum possible declination of 23.4 degrees plus that 5.2 degrees that we saw in latitude that was the moon's maximum latitude. So that's going to be a maximum of about 28.6 degrees maximum declination that the moon will go. So anytime the moon is past 23.4 degrees or 23.5 degrees, the moon's going to be considered out of bounds anytime it goes above that in declination or below that in declination. But that only happens at specific times, and I'm, I'll explain that in a second here. Um, if we look here, we see that the moon right here is at maximum declination, right in the same point of the zodiac that the sun is. And we see right here, right at this position right here, it's just slightly above the sun's maximum declination. So for a couple of days here, it was out of bounds and then it comes back in bounds. So what's happening is, let me go to restrictions and turn on the north and south lunar nodes. This is the north node and this is the south node right here. And what these are, all these are, are the points in the zodiac where the moon hits zero degrees latitude, okay? So if the moon is hitting, the north node is when it comes from a negative number. And let's go back here so we can see this clearly. We're back where we're seeing the latitude. When the moon is heading towards 
the lunar north node, the latitude is going to be increasing. And we see that right here. See the latitude getting closer, and then as the moon hits that north node spot, it crosses over the zero point because the lunar north node shows where zero latitude is with the moon increasing latitude. The south node shows where the moon hits zero degrees latitude, decreasing latitude. So if we watch the moon, the latitude is going to increase until it's 90 degrees away from the north node and 90 degrees away from the south node. That's the maximum latitude there. We're about 5.2, 5.3 degrees at which point it starts to decline again and then it hits zero degrees right there. And that's pretty well understood by a lot of people. But what you might not realize, and we'll go back here to equatorial position so we can see the declination again, what you might not realize is the position of the north and south node dictate how far out of bounds the moon is going to be able to go. Now the reason for that is all planets will see maximum declination somewhere in these two signs because it's being measured from the equator of the Earth. And I'm not going to go into huge lot of details about that because you can actually look that up online to much more in-depthly understand why the maximum declination occurs right here. Zero declination is always going to happen around here, these two points, and maximum here, minimum there. Okay, so what happens is if the north and south node are on the points where there's maximum declination and minimum declination, that means that the moon is going to be at zero degrees latitude, or um, yeah, latitude, let me get sure, make sure I get that right, when it's at the point in the zodiac that it will, it will be at maximum declination. So in other words, because the nodes or the zero latitude points are right here in the zodiac in the maximum and minimum places, it's going to be zero extra degrees on top of the 23.4 degrees that the sun sees. So to better understand this, we're going to go forward in time a bit to where the north and south node, let's match these up, <clears throat> are now at the points where declination is at zero. So if we look at the sun, when the sun reaches the uh, spring equinox or the fall equinox, it's at zero degrees declination right there. And the moon now has its nodes at this point where the sun's at zero, the moon's now at zero. So the moon, as it goes past the north node right here, watch the moon's declination it's at maximum negative here and see how it goes out of bounds. Well now right here the moon's latitude is at zero when the declination is zero. So when the declination is at maximum or 90 degrees away from the zero point, the moon's latitude is also going to be at maximum. So we have the maximum out of bounds possible for the moon anyway when its north and south nodes are at the equinox point. Okay, so there's going to be a point in time, because it takes over a year to travel through a sign, the north node does, because it's an 18.6 year cycle. So, so like a year and a half or so. So it'll be years, like right now, at this point in time, because this is 2025, <clears throat> excuse me, at 2025, we'll have the moon's ability to be at maximum out-of-bounds uh, declination, as shown right here. But right now, if we go back in time to where we are right now, which is approximately May, June, we're actually close to there. Today's the 29th. We're very, very close to where the nodal points are at zero or I'm sorry, the nodal points are at maximum minimum, which means the moon's latitude will have an extra zero degrees. Hopefully that's clear and not confusing you too much. But the point is 
right now at this point in time and for months before this and for months after this the moon will have next to no out of bounds there's it will spend the least amount of time possible out of bounds okay and then several years from now about five years from now we saw when the nodes are over here we're going to see the moon have its maximum amount of time spent out of bounds okay so that's all i really wanted to talk about in this video i just wanted to point this out to you because it's actually going to help us out in for future videos down the road so hopefully you listen to the end a lot of you might already know exactly everything that i've already said and if that's true that's a good thing that means you're ahead of the game but if not then hopefully you learn something if you kind of learned it and it was kind of confusing then you can Put questions in the comments down below or better yet look it up on the internet because like I said this is pretty common knowledge and the, I'm sure there's a lot of websites out there that explain at least the difference between latitude and declination much better and then they'll be able to explain out of bounds much better but I did want to point out the fact that the moon goes through periods of time where it has spends a very long time with next to no out of bounds and then it spends periods of time where there's a lot of time spent out of bounds, relatively speaking. So until next time, this is Henry Steele.